Hello sewing friends, it's so upcycle time. I am part of the vlogger tour at the end of this episode. I'll tell you who's come before and afterwards. The rules are very similar to last year, apart from this year, and I will put it in, I'll just shuffle this rabbit, I'll put it in here while I'm talking. This year you need to show the before and after, so you need to show what you created it from. So make sure you take a little snap before you start hacking things up, cutting things up. Um, but apart from that, the rules are fairly similar. It's a garment or accessory. You can do hashtag sew up cycle whip during the month. But at the end of the month, you need to take it with hashtag sew up cycle 24 to share your pieces. And remember, you're going to need to put two pictures like a carousel on Instagram. So when you select a picture, you need to select the little like multiple picture option and put the before and after. So it's up to you which way around you do it, but you must share both pictures because this year they're really keen to see what it started like and how it ended. So I love this challenge. Firstly, if you are one of my regular viewers, you will know that I upcycle throughout the year and I'm always on the lookout for things. But I like this challenge because it really condenses, I don't, I don't know if it's actually quite warm today. Um, it really condenses my thinking to be really considered about making sure I do it because otherwise I end up buying, getting things and I actually then don't use them <laughs> to upcycle. But I have been thinking a lot about that. I did for So Frugal some um, upcycles, which was uh, tablecloths and things like that. So what I'm going to do first is to give you some inspiration. I'm going to put like a little carousel of pictures in of things I've done previously because sometimes it's just getting the inspiration. And, there, and then I'll give you some ideas of things I'm doing this year and just some general tips. So things I've done previously, I love an upcycle with a men's shirt. They're often kicking around at home from people who used to wear shirts, relatives you know, friends and so on. So I have also done with my own shirts as well. So one of the great ones I like to do is take two shirts and join them together and use both collars so that you've got a more interesting shirt. This gives you an opportunity to tailor it a bit more, bring sleeves in, that sort of thing. I like taking shirt dresses or men's shirts or big oversized shirts and using the front placket as part of another item, whether that is a whole upcycled dress, which is done out of other pieces and you can use the placket in that, or it might be just the top, where I say just, I don't mean the top, but slightly less ambitious project but also with men's shirts I have done things that like made a padded waistcoat with all pieces from men's shirts and um, I've had some failures too I've tried some things and I think this is the thing which I'll go on to talk about in a minute is not everything will always work one of the other things I've liked to do is use fabric so sort of harvesting fabric from one thing and turning it into a bag or something like that if the pieces are small patchwork them together if not use complementary pieces in different parts of the bag I have joined two skirts together to make one in different ways so luckily once I had a St Michael's pair of skirts that were clearly uh, from the same range so the buttons matched down the front and it meant I could join them at the back then another time I took two skirts and use one skirt as like insert pieces to widen the waist and they were good contrasting things and then I've taken skirts that are like nice big sort of circle skirts and used the fabric to make other things. A pair of trousers that didn't quite work so that's one of the things is sometimes how much the vision is there the reality might not be quite what you hoped for and then made dresses out of multiple bits of shirts and dresses and one of the things with that is to use fabric that's of a similar type because when you work with them they work together but also when you wash them and wear them they feel similar as well um, and I've used bits of blankets to be like linings things like that 
as I mentioned, tablecloths into skirts, tablecloths into tops. Oh, it's one of those things that, and I think the Great British Sewing Bee has some credits to take in this, that just encouraging people to look at things in different ways. There are some brilliant accounts with inspiration, which I'll link below as well. Um, but I'm really happy that upcycling and fabric harvesting to use is becoming a really great thing now. Obviously the Busy Bee Sewing Challenge, our challenge too was an upcycle, so you can go and watch all of those for inspiration as well. I would say that it is one of those things where you need to be brave and have a go. Some people might say they either love this challenge or they hate it, not the Sew Cycle Challenge, but in general like upcycling. And when they watch things like the Great British Sewing Bee, they either would love to do that one or like, oh no, I'd hate to do that one. I think the thing is, theirs is done under time pressure, which I would not like. And also theirs often ends up being not wearable because of the time pressure, but it's more showing what you could do. I have done things that have not worked out and that's okay because what I want you to remember, and I remember saying this last year as well, is many of these things have languished at the bottom of a wardrobe, in a bin bag, in a loft, and they've not been filling their clothing destiny. So if you take them and try combining them and it doesn't quite work how you thought, it's been a worthwhile activity, activity, pursuit, creative journey, part of your sewing. See it as a toile. And it's okay because you could still cut the pieces up and use them to patchwork together. Not everything has to turn out the way we want it to. And some things completely shock me with how well they turn out and other things I'm like, mm, that's not what I had in my head. You win some, you lose some. Uh, bag turned out really well. I did about two years ago. That was a good one. So I have used this as an opportunity to have a good sort out of things that I could harvest fabric from or things that are mid upcycle, that sort of thing. So some of them I won't enter into the challenge because I can't show the before and after, but I probably will still do them because it is a good time of year to, to think about this. Tablecloths I love, by the way, the different variations of thickness and things. You can have some really great success with those. Let's get into what I'm going to do or hoping to do this year. So number one is the gorgeous tablecloth that I've been wanting to do something with and someone gave me a brilliant idea of turning it into like a, a sort of robe slash, slash dressing gown and I am going to do that. So hopefully in this episode I would have started it and at the end I'm going to put some of the progress in for you. Let me now get some other bits and show you some things I'm going to do. So let's start with this most gorgeous beast, which is from my one of my journeys through Kent. I will link up here the episode. This has now been washed and soaked and is smelling like my neutral washing powder smell. And I could just keep it like this and just, as someone said, snuggle under it. But I don't want to, I want to, I want to do something with this. So I'm going to really try and do that during this month. It could become a jacket. It could become like a poncho. It might become a different style of bedspread. I might back it and then sort of stitch onto it. It could be that part of it becomes the, like, it could become multiple things. So I would love your comments. This is the one that I'm struggling the most with. Now I can't crochet. So if I separate these squares, I know there's a risk I might end up needing to crochet bits back together. Um, I know that like you separate them because they've been joined together. So I can see the joins there, but sometimes people like crochet along the bottom and things. And obviously this lovely edge has crocheted it all together. <sighs> So that one is one that I'm really thinking about, but I can't make up my mind. Things I know a bit more about. So I have these two sweatshirts that no longer fit me or the person that they were for. So there's this one with an amazing Wonder Woman on the front. And this one with a fabulous Star Wars on the front. 
and I've seen a lot of great like um, t-shirt uh, jumper things where these are cut round and put behind and then cut through so they reappear and this one has the Star Wars down the side as well so I haven't denied about this one and whether I'd like it on the back of a jacket maybe or I keep talking about jackets or on a bag or a cushion now if it's a cushion I don't think I can put it in the challenge but it doesn't matter so you might well have some things like this where it's like a beloved design but the rest of it is not um, wearable anymore because it's either got a stain or people are going out of it so definitely going to take this because that is all like machine embroidery and like beautifully done so they are on my really want to do and then I have a denim shirt I bought it from the ladies section I think in a charity shop yep crowns on a six pound this one too it's really from H&M so this denim shirt I'm going to turn into a waistcoat Lovely Paige Joanna did a version of this and I'm going to use some binding I think around the edges and I think it will work brilliantly over the tops of dresses, tops etc. And then I will have some fabric left over which I want to add into some other bits of patchwork. So that's a definite. So for example the other bits could go in with this dress that I'm going to cut up. This uh, dress, this skirt is too thin. It, it's it's like a form of brush cotton but it's lived a life I would say I think it was probably yes it was definitely handmade at the time when it was done and it's just it's just exhausted itself now but as patchwork pieces think of it with a bit of a denim and some other bits as like like a jumper or jacket if you've seen my awesome plans a, a quilted jumper so thinking about how these pieces will work together now, one of my favourite shops used to be a shop called Collective and they sold modern versions of vintage style clothes. They were all newly made. Sadly, this year they've gone into administration and they don't exist anymore. Um, and I sadly do not fit in this skirt, which is glorious. Look at that, look. Absolutely glorious autumn in a skirt. And their fabric was always such great quality and has, where is it, it has like a little bit of, look, bit of give to it. And I happen to have the skirt, which, yes, that is not a waist I don't I think I'll ever get anymore. And I happen to have a dress as well. Now, the dress might still fit me, but it doesn't feel like me anymore. And there's a lot of fabric here, so I'd really like to use this. And I'm not 100% sure what, but I think there's plenty of fabric here. There's two zips, so uh, that's on the list. I'm just going to get one more thing. Well, one more things. Honestly, it's never just one. So let's do this first of all. I have this duvet cover, which is reverse so the pattern is the reverse on the back so it's white i'd really like to make that into a summer dress i know summer's gone but i'm hanging in hope i might go on a hot holiday um so that i'd really like to turn into a summer dress so duvets are something that you can definitely use as part of sew up cycle you don't have to buy them you might have one in your house you can use now i found this in a charity shop recently which is a, a sheet and it feels lovely quality two pounds and then I have been collecting on my travels autumnal looking men's shirts and I've actually bought some of these from Vinted and they've been on there for weeks and weeks and so I am put an offering. So this one is a needle cord, this one's like a brushed cotton and then on my line is a mustard needle cord and like a burgundy and I have thoughts and visions of doing like an amazing patchwork with all of these um now some of that patchwork might be scrapped and I'm not sure if scraps are allowed I might just do it anyway but I can feel a bit more of a men's shirt thing coming on this is a really nice feel it's a really velvety feel this one <laughs> now I'm like actually I'd just quite like to turn this into a shirt for me uh but that's on the list of things to, to do. And there is something else. 
I've had this Bowden dress for about 10 years. It doesn't fit me anymore, but I love the fabric. And I'm wondering if I can salvage it and either do a top and take some of the skirt fabric in into the sides or the back of the top to make it fit. I don't think it goes round me, like round my waist. Yes, it's all a bit tight. So yeah, ideas for this one too. I've got a good amount of fabric here. Might just make a top. Sometimes it's just nice to make tops, isn't it, with your, your fabric? Hmm. Okay, so there are my thoughts. I would like to say that Afraid Upcycle, she has some brilliant inspiration. Even if when you first look at her clothes that she sells and think, oh, I'm not sure if they're for me. Actually, her YouTube channel is amazing. Her ideas are brilliant. She sells patterns. She really shows how she combines things together. She makes scrap bags, which she like pads with the scraps as well and uses like the organza. And she did an amazing upcycle with a man's shirt and turned the buttons into going down the back and use like the top piece. So she's definitely worth a look if you're looking for some inspiration. I really think this is a great time to have a go at doing a quilted item because you could use... Um, like I was saying here, like this on the back of the quilting, like a, a bit of like a, a, a sort of a brushed cotton flannel. You could use um, a bit of like a bedspread or quilt or a, a quilt that you've made and want to make into something else. I am definitely going to be doing that. Now I might or might not do that as part of the cycle because it's going to happen anyway. And there are some really nice ones, some like short sleeve sort of over top ones that you could wear with like turtlenecks underneath, full on jumpers, jackets, all sorts of different ways that you can do that. And I think it's a great opportunity to use up bits and pieces that perhaps you don't want to use on their own, but you could combine together. I'm definitely having a good close look at some clothing that I'm going to donate to charity shop, but some of it I am going to harvest the fabric instead because I can use them into these other items. And don't feel you have to use just one item into something else. Combining things, layering um, inside and outside, like a bag, you could do one fabric on the outside of a dress and a different dress on the inside. So really have a look and think about how you use the button packets on things. Lengthening or short, you can't lengthen something unless you put a different fabric on it, but you can shorten things. Don't be frightened to cut off the sleeves, take the side in, reattach the sleeves, reattach a different sleeves so that you've got two different things working together. So this is a great opportunity to have some fun, try something that perhaps the rest of the time you don't try, or dig out something that you've made and you don't wear and turn it into something else. And stick around because there's some info about the tablecloth upside. So I thought I'd take you with me on my exploration of how to do this what i can say for sure is this won't be a tutorial this is a have i worked out how to do this so i decided to cut the bottom orange strip off uh, which will become the top because you don't need it there and then this can be used either as a front facing or a belt and also because I've gone for the shorter length as the length of my body because I'm nice and short so that's plenty, probably be a bit extra off the top. And then I've already cut one of the sides, can you see running along there and I've laid it over the top of the other one. So I've done it wider than my shoulders because obviously we need it to wrap. So I'm just laying it over the top so I can get it in line and cut the second one. Then I've got plenty left to do the back might have enough left to do sleeves see how we go but it's going to be a drop shoulder anyway i think so i'm keeping the front orange at the moment for the front of the robe and the bottom definitely for the bottom of the robe but we shall see because there's quite a vast expanse of white there so i'm just thinking about that i might gather it a bit so it like at the front it's slightly gathered 
So I'm just thinking that, or I will cut it off and then re-stitch it on so it goes round the neckline and back down again. We shall see. So I have two pieces for sleeves, the back panel, and over there the two side panels and all the orange bits. So what I'm actually going to do is baste it together, the back and the two fronts, and just see how it is and then go from there. But if I do a big loose baste, I, it's better than doing clips because it hangs better and then I can see what next. So that is what my message to you is here is be brave, have a go. You can do things and don't feel bad if you don't end up with necessarily a wearable piece because you've taken yourself on a playful journey with some fabric. Cool. And I'll catch you again soon. Bye.